Okay, Dean Leggy Show for the week of Georgia's game with Vanderbilt in 2013 this past week. Uh, the Bulldogs dropped a, uh, a tough one to Missouri, who is now in first place by themselves in the SEC East. It will remains to be seen how long how uh, long the Tigers will actually be there. Uh, they lost their quarterback for a few weeks. Uh, right at the time, they were going to be playing some pretty critical games against uh, Florida and South Carolina. But Georgia uh, is also in a critical stretch. Um, I think the common sense part of uh, the Bulldog country understands that uh, the entire season is in front of them. And uh, although they lost to Missouri this past week, nothing has prevented Georgia from winning the SEC championship. I mean, unless Missouri goes undefeated the rest of the way, which seems pretty unlikely. Uh, the Missouri is about a three-point underdog at home to Florida this week. Um, so long season left to go. Georgia will probably be without Todd Gurley. This weekend in Nashville, uh, that's not necessarily a surprise. That's That's been sort of the indication. Everybody expects him back before Florida. Uh, that would be five weeks from the time at which he suffered the, the ankle injury at, against LSU. So, and Georgia really hadn't been the same team since he went out. I mean, if you think about it, they really scored a ton of points that first month of the season, even though they lost to Clemson the first game. They, they really scored at a pretty frantic pace. With Todd out of the game, and then obviously Justin Scott Wesley being gone for the season, and then Michael Bennett being gone until about the Florida game, they've certainly slowed down the scoring, and that's really hurt them. Uh, defensively, Georgia's got to get a lot better getting off the field on third down. That has been a huge problem for them. The yardage has not necessarily been an issue for Georgia's defense. Uh, in fact, they're playing pretty well. Against, well, they're playing very well against the run. They're number four in the conference right now, but they're really struggling against the pass right now. And uh, people say, "Well, why is that? You know, why why is Georgia not fired Ty Grantham? Why are why is Scott, Scott Lakato still the defensive uh, backs coach?" Well, there's a pretty simple answer. Now, most people don't that that are sort of stuck in their position don't want to hear it, which is that. Well, I mean, Georgia is starting a lot of youth on defense, and the the bulk, the bulk of that youth is starting in the secondary. Um, if Georgia had a serious coaching problem, they wouldn't have been second in the SEC last year against the pass, which is what they were. So when you lose guys to the NFL, it matters. And, um, you know, next year when Aaron Murray's in the NFL, there's going to be a learning curve for the next starter at Georgia, whether that's, you know, Hudson Mason, Bryce Ramsey, or whoever it may be. Um, they're, you know, let Let's put the hysterics on, on you know, pause for a little bit and understand where George is really at right now. They control their own destiny with the exception of the Missouri game. Missouri probably will lose at least one, if not three games in the SEC. They've still got Florida, South Carolina, Texas A&M, Tennessee, and uh, two other games um, that they'll have to play. That's a tough slate for the Tigers, um, as good as they were. Makes it more complicated without James Franklin, but we'll see. Georgia will have to deal with the James Franklin of their own this week with Vanderbilt, a team that is 0-3 in the SEC and 3-3 and on the season, a team that certainly can throw the ball. That's a, a big advantage for Vanderbilt. That's something they've done well. Um, but they've lost, and they've allowed a lot of points, uh, Vandy, uh, at home in games. Uh, and uh, as somebody who knows a lot about football, you know, in the in the conference, say, you know, just I just don't think they're a very good team, Vanderbilt, right now. But you know, Georgia's playing who they're playing, and and you know, Georgia isn't what they used to be either. So it's it's time for the Bulldogs to step up and uh, get a win. Um, to you know, a loss to Vanderbilt and the season is gone. Probably, I would say the same about a loss to Florida. Uh, as well, I mean, it's just kind of uh, ridiculous to say that when you have uh, a team that's top 15 and has one loss in the conference. Uh, but it would be very damaging. Uh, I'm not saying they couldn't come back from a to win the conference to win the the East with two losses in in the conference, but it would make it complicated. I mean, I think if they lost to Kentucky, that'd be one thing because you know the Wildcats aren't going to beat them at the top of the of the the rankings there, but. You know, Georgia needs to win this game against Vanderbilt. They're about a seven and a half point favorite, depending on which, you know, Las Vegas service that you're most interested in looking at. But um, it's a winnable game for sure for Georgia. And, you know, they're going to have to run the ball a little bit with a little bit more authority, I thought they could have run it a little better, I guess, against Missouri. 
I expect them to try to do that against Vanderbilt for sure. Vanderbilt's struggling right now on defense, just like Georgia is. But you know, these Bulldogs, there's, there's, there's a couple things here. If Georgia plays even in the turnover uh, battle with Vanderbilt, they'll win. If uh, they can get to where they're about 25% on third down defensive stops, they'll win the game. Uh, and if they get both of those, the game might not be, you know, it might be Georgia's first comfortable game all year. Mark Rick said this week he does not expect a comfortable game, and I don't know why anybody would. Um, Georgia has not shown the ability to put anybody away. Um, didn't do that to LSU. Didn't do that to South Carolina until the end. Didn't do that to Tennessee. So it certainly is one of those things where Georgia's going to have to start ending games, and that that basically comes to the defense. Um, they're going to have to play better, and I think I think they will. Um, now, if you just don't like Todd Grantham and you think he should be fired, which is ridiculous, then uh, you know you're not going to agree with me, and that's fine too. But um, you know you you can't say Todd Grantham had been good for Georgia because he can, he, because he has. And you can say, well, he hasn't been as good as he should have been. All right, well, great, that's a good answer. But the the the, the fact of the matter is, they're replacing a lot of guys on defense. The defense did what it had to do last year. To get Georgia in position to win the SEC championship, Georgia ran out of time by uh, you know with the offense on the field, not the defense. So, just you know, I'm just trying to live in reality. This season is all in front of Georgia. They need to win this game against Vanderbilt, no matter how they do it, defense, offense, or special teams. And I think they're more than capable of doing that. It'll be a noon kickoff on CBS. And now I'm going to take some questions from the audience. UGA Dog Forever 08, which is kind of strange because Forever. You wouldn't really want to put a number on that, but they've gone ahead and done that. How good can this team be with Jonathan Rump, Todd Gurley, and Michael Bennett returning to the offense? Well, I mean, I think it can be. Jonathan Rump has not played this year. and Todd Gurley has played, but not entire games except the South Carolina game. Now, I mean, think about it. The only full game he's played that's been a competitive game has been South Carolina. You know they 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 missed him against Clemson for sure in that time that he wasn't in there, and then obviously they missed him against Missouri and Tennessee. So you know how good can they be with just Todd Gurley the rest of the way? The answer is very good. Uh, Michael Bennett really helps Aaron Murray just because of timing. Those two guys have been on the same field. This is their third year together. That's a long time, and he's big on timing routes. And then Jonathan Rump is the mystery of it all. Um, Somebody's got to replace the speed guys. I mean, Reggie Davis is a speed guy too, but somebody's got to stretch the field. And they think Jonathan Rump can do that. They can also think that, and really more than that, they think he can be a big presence in the red zone, uh, Jonathan Rump. So this 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 Georgia team has not played its best game, that's for sure, yet this season, and yet they're still in striking distance of Atlanta. So how good can it be when it's hitting all cylinders? I mean, there's no team Georgia can't beat um, when they're – when they're completely injury free, that that's a real problem for them right now. But by the way, let me just say this too about injuries: nobody should feel sorry for Georgia about injuries. Uh, Missouri has had a massive injury. Florida has had two. Um, it's it's just that's how college football is, and that's why you recruit to be as deep as possible. And right now, we saw that Georgia has you know even with Ty Gurley and uh, Keith Marshall, you you you'd imagine that they are super deep at running back. Well. You know, as it turns out, and this has always been true, you need at least three good running backs in the SEC. Um, right now, I don't think we can say that about Georgia. Um, and you can you can save it on J.J. Green and Brendan Douglas, who have done a very good job this season so far. They are not T, uh, Ty Gurley and Keith Marshall. They are not those things. Now, they may become that one day, but they're not right now. And you got to have three guys or four. Georgia could benefit from four guys right now. At running back. This is a long question. The strength of the defense has been the front seven, which I agree. The play of the safeties, especially uh, Corey Moore and Quincy Marger, have been really the weakest part of the defense. Is there any shot Grantham sticks to a 3-4 base throughout, even against spread teams, instead of going to the nickel? No, that's not going to happen just because of matchups. That puts an extra safety on the field and takes out one of the linebackers Is it is subbing uh, a weakness for a strength. Of course, Margaret has played a lot of, with Matthews out, which is the key. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't forget the fact that Trey Matthews is not playing right now either. But he and Moore 
and together is really a huge liability. If the if the extra DB is not helping with coverage, wouldn't it be best to rush an extra linebacker? I think as long as you got multiple problems with the defense. First of all, is that they're way too young. Secondly, and and somewhat more important, as important or more important, there's been no continuity in the in the defensive secondary. There's been eight guys in the secondary that have started at least two games a season. Now think about that. That's a lot of guys, and uh, that's just too many. I'll try to name them off the top of my head, but I, I've written about this, and you can go back and look on Dog Post about what it was. And it's Quincy Marger, Brendan Langley. Trey Matthews, Connor Norman, Justin, uh, not Justin Scott Wesley, <laughs> uh, Josh Harvey Clemens, uh, Damian Swan, and uh, Shaq Wiggins, and somebody else. They've had that many guys start at least two games. That's a lot. That's that's too. Oh, Corey Moore. That's too many. That's way too much. So continuity. You're going to play nickel in, in general when you play against the spread. That's the point of the spread. You've got to, you've got to react to the defense, uh, the offense. You want to cause them to react to you. But you, you mean realistically, they're going to put on out there what they're going to put out there. and You've got to deal with it. Uh, so in theory, getting your weakest players off the field is really a good notion. But Georgia doesn't have that luxury at this moment. Now, last year they did have that luxury. And uh, they could do that from time to time. But, you know, they, they don't have that luxury right now. And people got to understand that. They're, they are still, still going to have to outscore people. Uh, but the defense can improve now. That, don't, both things can be true. That, what aggravates me more than anything else, both things can be true at the same time. It, they're not exclusive of one another. I mean, if you say this defense is young, that's not an excuse. That is an explanation and living in reality. If they're young, they can still get better. And, you know, people say, well, they haven't been getting better. I, I don't know that I believe that completely. Um, I think it's they're much better against the run than they were the first two weeks. Much better. So, you know, you can't say they're not better because they are. Now, on the scoreboard, they have they actually on the scoreboard have been getting better, uh, with the exception of the LSU game. I mean, that game was a real problem. The Missouri game, you know, uh, a lot of offensive touchdown. I mean, it's, it's just Georgia's got to be better with the ball. Just period. It's got to. It's got to want the ball more. Want to possess the ball more, whether it's offense or defense. If Georgia uh, so happens to lose to Florida, Auburn, and Georgia Tech, and is due and it's due to the same poor play we've seen from our defense, does Grantham keep his job still because the defense is so young? Is he safe regardless this year? Well, yeah, and. Them losing to those three teams, to me, Georgia Tech's pretty rough right now. So I just can't see that. But, you know, could they lose to Florida? Sure. Could they lose to Auburn? Yeah. Will they? Probably not both games. So, you know, second question. How much of an advantage is it for next year for Georgia to have a fifth-year senior Hudson making Mason taking over at such a time when all the top SEC quarterbacks will be gone? I mean, Hudson Mason's never played. We don't. We don't know what Hudson's going to be like when the band plays, so I'm not. I mean, I'm not making any promises there. Uh, I don't hear anything bad about Hudson Mason. That's for sure. I hear a lot of positive stuff, but we we don't know. We don't know. It's it's better than probably having a true freshman playing in the secondary, but we don't know what Hudson Mason will be like. Third question: Even with Murray gone, does Georgia still have a better chance to win the title next year over this season if Georgia didn't have any injuries? Reason being, the defense should be 100 times better, which is really saying something. I don't know about 100. Uh, all the SEC quarterbacks will be gone. And last but not least, the playoff gives us a better chance of winning with four teams. Well, the biggest thing is the playoffs. I mean, if Georgia, if, Georgia, if the playoff was in place right now, Georgia would have no issue, period. I mean, it'd be, they'd still be in the national championship hunt. Because at that stage, all you'd have to do is be in the top, you know, 12 in November or something like that. You could just work your way up in the top four. Um, I think the biggest thing is uh, that that playoff will benefit no program more than, than the University of Georgia. I mean, think about how close they've been for so long, and this year could be one of those years again. We'll see. Jaw Jew Dog asks, Next year, if Bryce Ramsey shows to be a better quarterback in practice, do you believe – uh, the coaching staff will start him, start Hudson Mason over him just because Hudson stuck around. 
Well, that's kind of... I, I don't think Hudson has just stuck around. I mean, I think he's legitimately the backup. There's no question who would go into the game if Aaron Murray were injured or if there was a season-ending injury to Aaron Murray. I mean, it would be Hudson Mason. He's the most ready to go right now, uh, period. And that's just not from sticking around. I mean, Hudson's had a good good practice. There's just nobody's seen him play in the games, really. I think the better quarterback will play next year. I just think that it's going to be hard for Bryce Ramsey to overtake Hudson Mason. That That's my take. Uh, Hudson, uh, excuse me, Bryce Ramsey has, the of all the quarterbacks in Georgia right now, he has the best set of skills. It's, it's He's better than Murray, and Murray's the starter. So he has the best body, the best arm, but does he have, this is the question with Bryce Ramsey, does Bryce Ramsey have the understanding of, what it takes to win in the SEC. Does he know how to go to the to the uh, line of scrimmage with two plays, uh, kill one, and go into the other? Is he going to get Georgia into the right play call? Uh, is he going to be oh, – I know – I mean, I, I've been around the kid a lot. He, he doesn't get nervous. I was going to say, so is, does he get nervous? No, he does not get nervous, so that won't be really an issue. The question with Bryce Ramsey – because Bryce Ramsey is going to start at some point at Georgia. The question with Bryce Ramsey is – Will he, will he have the ability that all the other Georgia quarterbacks have had to basically be their own boss on the field? Georgia has a long legacy of guys who are the quarterback just doing it. I mean, they obviously have a lot of input from Mike Bobo and Mark Rick, but there's there is a lot of dependency by that staff on the quarterback. And you're asking a guy who's been in college for a year, I mean nine months at this moment, but for about a year and a half by the time that Clemson game comes around next year, you're asking that guy, is is that guy ready? Now, there's been precedent for this before. Under Mark Richt, a redshirt freshman, David Green, beat out Corey Phillips, a guy who actually had started some games for Georgia in the past and could really throw it. So, the thing for me with Ramsey and and with Mason is, is Ramsey's complete athleticism and quarterbackness will that beat out the you know longevity of Hudson Mason and the sort of experience that he's been? I mean, you can't replicate five years of being at one place. That's something Bryce Bryce just doesn't have right now. So um, I think if it's not obvious that it's Bryce Ramsey, then that means to me it will be Hudson Mason. But I think Bryce Ramsey will play uh, a fair amount. I think he'll play. Next year, in the first six games, more than Hudson Mason has played in this six, you know, games, which is not much for Hudson. Not not because Hudson's done something wrong, just because of the way it's gone. Did I enjoy the friendship of many football fans? That's good. That's a good. St- I like this. This is a good start to a question. I've actually not read this question, so we're, we're going to read this one on the fly. Some of them have to be fervent Auburn, Alabama, and Florida fans. We enjoy giving each other an occasional grief when our programs stumble. They have recently been on me about this year's Georgia team being the worst in its entire football history and yielding points per game. I do not think that's true, but I'm curious how this ranks among our previous teams. Your feedback should help me in my official response to these idiots. <laughs> Isn't college football really good? Uh... Well, our old friend Air Force dog has come through rescuing us here. The 2013 defense, as it stands right now, is allowing 100, excuse me, 3,300, 33.7 points a game. That's uh, 105 out of 200, well, 123 FBS football teams. So that's pretty bad, right? That is really bad. The second worst in Georgia history. Now, this, this but let me make a note here, real quick. The, sec- the second worst. Is a 31.3 points per game. Last year's team was averaging about 24 points, I think it was, uh, midway through the season, and they only allowed 15. The the seven the, the first seven games they allowed 24. The second seven games they only allowed 15. Their their average was 19.6 last year, which is the best of the Todd Grantham era. Even though all we hear about is how bad the uh, last year's defense was, which is kind of 
ridiculous. Um, that that nineteen point six is one of the better ones, just like in the last twenty years. It's not it's not perfect, but it's one of the better ones uh, for sure. Uh, so when you're dealing with these idiots, by the way, I feel bad with from you if you're if you're really it, feel, dealing with idiots. I mean, all I would say is, yeah, you know, Georgia's halfway through the season. They're giving up points like crazy, and they can still win the SEC. I mean, that's the world we live in. I mean, I, I think a lot of these SEC teams, frankly, we're seeing a scoring explosion in the conference for whatever reason. And it really is manifesting it with the top teams. I mean, the top teams are scoring at record pace, whether it's – you know, Georgia, LSU, Texas A&M, Alabama, South Carolina scoring tons of points. Um, it's just a new world in the SEC. I remember, you know, watching Nick Saban and Mark Rick go at it in 2003 down in Baton Rouge. That score was 10-3 to late in the fourth quarter. Um, last year when Georgia was playing Alabama, Nick Saban's team, that they both scored, you know, 60 points combined. So it's just a different, it's just a different league. I mean, I, I, I knew this was coming with these quarterbacks that are seniors right now and it'll, it'll regress, but you know, that's the world we live in right now in the SEC. It's, it's a scoring man's league and the team that wins it, unless it's Florida and it looks like it's going to be tough for Florida to win the SEC, uh, is going to be relying on their offense. I mean, Alabama is definitely not what they were on defense last year, and uh, they're they're not what they were on offense either. But that's what's going to get them to win the SEC championship if they do it. How are these guys with season-ending injuries handling it? It has to be traumatic for them. Well, yeah, it is traumatic actually. Um, it's really bad. It's it's really bad. I mean, if you look at uh, just a look on Justin Scott Wesley's face after he um, he had that ACL. And this is a guy, a smart kid, that really was coming into his own. I mean, he, he really was the guy that was going to replace Malcolm, who was the guy. And then, you know, Keith, Mitchell, or Keith, uh, Keith Marshall replaces the guy, and he was going to be the guy. I mean, it's starting to look like Keith was going to be a guy for a month. These guys definitely work hard. There's no question. Everybody in college football works hard. But um, everybody in college football doesn't have a season-ending injury. And part of the part of the bad part about being in the media is keeping up with and asking questions about these kids. And the, the, the reality is they can't help it that they get hurt. And they can't. There's very few things that prevent you getting hurt uh, with something like a ACL. And... Um, it's just too bad, and you got to worry about their mental state. I had a very close friend when I was growing up went through, uh, I think it was one ACL or two, I can't remember. Larry Brown was a starting tight end at Georgia, and it was just tough. I mean, um, it, it's tough to go through. I mean, first of all, you have to have surgery, and I am no fan of surgery. Uh, then you have to do the rehab process. And then uh, probably, probably the worst part, is even though you're one of the boys, you're not one of the boys, and you're in the locker room, and it's just different. And so that that's the worst part, I think, is that, A, you can't go out there and do something, and then, B, you know, Malcolm Mitchell wasn't in Tennessee to take in that win. Um, that's the sort of stuff that you miss, I think, is just being around the guys. And... The good news for those guys is they they will they will live to fight another day. But the bad news is they're not back, and Georgia's not the same as they were. Uh, the question is, will they become back what they were when they get Michael Bennett back, Todd Gurley back, and the emergence of what we don't know with Jonathan Rump? So, very important game this week for the Georgia Bulldogs against Vanderbilt up there. Early kick. Georgia has not played great with early kicks this year, so we'll see what happens when they play Vanderbilt. If they win this game, the season will be completely different than if they lose it. Obvious statement. But the reason why is because there's going to be two weeks until they play the Gators, 
and there probably won't be a game they can't win or be favored in from that point forward. So this is this is a very important game for Georgia. Missouri was critical. It would have given them some big time leeway. Now they don't have much in the way of leeway. I mean, South Carolina might not lose the rest of the season. So um, you know, Georgia's got to stay at one loss, and that's it. Anyway, Georgia Vanderbilt, CBS at noon. This has been the Dean Leggy Show here on Dog Post.